if you can if you can line up a few of these small jobs in a day and execute six seven eight even ten of these little jobs you see this GFCI that I just installed well hey I'm about to show you how to make sixteen hundred dollars an hour as an electrician it's Joel Walsman CEO and master electrician let's go here we go, we're gonna replace this receptacle with a proper GFCI receptacle, as is required in bathrooms. So I'm gonna start the timer, kill the power, and swap it out. Ready, set, got my son helping me on the other end. Hit the breaker, Zeke. Boom, power's off, let's rock. Wow, this is tight. <clears throat> this is a really small hole. The tile is encroaching on the electrical box. We don't even know if the GFCI is gonna fit. <clears throat> Whoo! Small box full of wire. It's getting dicey. <clears throat> there is a hot neutral reverse in this box. We're gonna have to, oh, look at that, one of the wires has already popped off. Whoo, yep, and it's just wired backwards. The white wires, which are very dull digi white, are on the hot terminals. So somebody was trying to swap out an outlet. It's a new outlet in here, and just didn't quite know how to do it. Being a GFCI, I'm gonna straighten out the wires because we're gonna they're gonna plug in and we're gonna put both sets of conductors on the line side. Too too long. There it is. All prepped and ready. Let's wire everything in on the line side here. Nice and snug. Oh, wow. All right, I'm gonna have to use the longer screws that they had in this outlet. And there's another thing going on here is we don't have a ground path because this is a, a metal box. And the GFCI requires a ground. Ooh, I'm gonna clear all this trash out of here. All that debris. Really couldn't be too much worse than what, what we're encountering here. Could be done by now. So I've got to make a decision. And uh, do I drill and tap the box and modify the box or do I count on the screws to be the ground path for the box? And what we're gonna do is count on the screws here and then test it to make sure that there is an effective ground path. Some of you might say, why aren't you taping the receptacle? It's not a code requirement to tape the receptacle. That is just a practice that some people thoroughly love and enjoy. This uh, GFCI has stub outs on the side that prevent 
the terminals of the receptacle from coming into contact with the metal sides of the box. Ooh. There it is. I have to trim this up right here. There's some mortar. It's encroaching on the path of the GFCI. Resistance. See what we're up against. My gloves are dirty. I don't want to get that GFCI dirty. I'm losing the gloves. Gloves are out, Jack. All right. Ooh, it is tight. some more cleanup get this mortar taken care of Ooh. let's try it again we'll get a full seat before we start putting those screws in there it is Tighten it, don't want to crack a tile. That is really truly a possibility. Use my screwdriver as a lever to straighten it up. Turn the brake around, Zeke. Boom, correct. Test function, we've got a good ground path, although it's a little bit less than what I would like. There it is, stop timer. Seven minutes, 30 seconds. So what can you actually charge for a small job like this? Well, I'm gonna give you a couple tips and tricks of how to structure things to optimize your business. Number one, connect with realtors, because every time a house transacts, unless it's an as-is buy, this is gonna to have to get taken care of. And missing GFCI protection is one of the most common code violations in existence in the US of A today. Typically, what we're gonna to charge to a customer is a one-time $50 service charge, plus a minimum of $125 for the first hour to show up. That's gonna cover our travel time and one hour of work. In addition to that, you're gonna have the cost of materials plus the markup on those materials. No materials come for free. You sourced them, you selected them, and in our case, we selected the best GFCI that can be bought. Back in the old days, like a decade ago at Jefferson Electric, we used to buy the cheap ones on sale, but the failure rate was too high, and the cost of callbacks was too great. So now we buy the best of materials to preserve all to our time, and we offer a forever workmanship warranty with no expiration. So we've got to be careful in what we're installing. If you, can, if you can line up a few of these small jobs in a day and execute six, seven, eight, even 10 of these little jobs, providing a rough ballpark estimate over the phone before rolling the truck out there, if a customer can provide you photos, you know the age of the home, you might know some of the challenges that you're up against. You can come prepared, knock out the job in a single visit, and it can be pretty lucrative. 
I've heard of handymen in particular who only serve one neighborhood and they execute a ton of small jobs for a very consistent customer base without any advertising costs and almost no travel time making lucrative amounts of money in very short amounts of time. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.